Connection with Spirit Mom. Today, we discuss live here on YouTube or on every podcast platform afterwards. We discuss the all is mind. For those who care about the visual effects and slideshow, you can view this after on YouTube. If not, enjoy listening to the show. So the all is mind we touched upon briefly in our last episode where I went over the seven hermetic principles. These are principles that everybody needs to know. They're the fabric of our reality. This is not just me being dramatic. This is the truth of the matter. If you wish to dive deep into these matters yourself, I do recommend the book, The Kybalion. It is the book that we all need to be diving deep into. It's written in the early 1900s, so it's in understandable words, because there's many books by the Hermetics, but they're written in the old they, thou, the language that's, or even older ancient languages, which are not so easy for us to understand. But the Kybalion is written in a way that is very understandable, and it's available free online as a PDF or in your library apps. It's available in multiple ways for free, and I recommend that you dive deep into this book. For today, we discuss the all is mind. It is the fabric of all my teachings and what I engage everything around. It is the fabric of metaphysics, and very soon I shall be a metaphysical minister and eventually a metaphysical doctor. And that is the core teaching, even though they don't teach in my school It's from the Hermetics, they teach this from their own way, but I have found the easiest way to get it across to the layman is with the way the Kybalion puts it. It's perfectly laid out for complete human comprehension, which is not an easy feat to get the human to deeply comprehend spiritual matters. You want to know this information. So the all is mind. What's this mean? It means we live in the mind of God. It means our mind makes our reality. It means everything is mind. This truth sets you free while also holding you 100% accountable for everything wrong in your life. And I know that sucks. And that's, that's why the world is sometimes a very hard place to be in. Today, we learn the first law of the universe, the law of mentalism is its official name, the law of mentalism, but better yet known as the all is mind. This, again, the Kybalion cannot preach, (laughs) preach its importance enough. No other book should be more read than this book itself. These are the seven hermetic laws that we went over in our last episode, and I quite possibly will go over in every episode. It is that important. And like we discussed yesterday, one to seven matters because the all is mind supersedes two and below and the law of correspondence, which is as above, so below, but there really is no above, below. There, There is no, that's not real. What's within is without. What we are on the inside is what we are on the outside. So if you're ugly on the inside, your surrounding, mean, you, you might not be ugly, but your surroundings will be ugly. Your life will be ugly. Your world will be ugly. If you want a beautiful world, then you need to be beautiful on the inside. It's very important that you are beautiful on the inside. I know that's easy, and it's why we can uh, resent those, oh, love and light, oh, beautiful, because honestly, most of them are faking it because it's not that easy. It's not that easy to be love and light if you're not on drugs. And some people are. The Dalai Lama was taken as a two-year-old and raised to be that way. And then people like Jesus and Buddha were big deals for a reason because reaching that level of enlightenment is no easy feat. But it's not an all or nothing game when it comes to enlightenment. It's Jacob's ladder. It's growth. It's ever producing a better life for yourself. So you can absolutely do this. You just need to constantly work at it. And utilizing these principles is the most efficient way to get it done. Because all the 
workshops and I have workshops myself. This is part of one of my workshops. All the mantras, all the affirmations, all the books you've read, they don't mean anything if you're not integrating that inside yourself. This is why meditation is the most powerful thing because meditation helps you integrate. So knowing this information is vital, but then you also want to integrate it and live by it. So as within, so without takes care of everything below it. So you can, the master can use these principles against each other, not in a negative way, but to help you just better your life. Because if you look, you can see this on the bottom here, we have the law number seven, cause and effect is AKA karma. We all know karma that comes from cause and effect, but it's the bottom, it's the seventh one. So you can overcome that by the all is mind as within, so without, and vibrations. This is probably the one we've all heard of the most. My vibe, man, don't harsh my vibe. You really don't want to harsh your vibe. You really do want a positive vibe. You really do want to cultivate a good vibration, which as we talked about in our last episode, will lead to a better frequency. And your frequency is your energy body. It's your constant state of your constant being, which would go into your all is mindness. It is your we're bigger than this human body. We are an energy body, a, a Taurus field of energy that is constantly in motion using vibrations. So the words you say, spelling, spell, every word you say, every single word, every single word, every single word, even inside your head, every single thought pattern, every single dirty look, every single happy smile is a vibration you are sending out into the world for infinity. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and blends into part of creation. So everything you do, everything you do, everything that's happening is creating your world. And then it's a rippling effect. We're all little drops in the pond rippling together. So you will affect everybody around you and they in turn will affect you. If you're not a master and you're not raised above them, which is not easy. Number four, we have the law of polarity. This one bums me out because for every positive, there's a negative. So even if you become Gandhi, Buddha, Jesus, somebody else is Satan. You know what I mean? And this one is the way the entire universe works. So whatever there is good, the equal is going to be bad. And hopefully one day our earth will do that split they keep talking about. And one could be good and one could be bad. I mean, that's actually one on the bad ones. But they say that there is beings that want to choose to be evil and they want to be evil. So good for them, I guess, because I don't, and I don't like living in a world that's filled with so much darkness. Not going to lie. It sucks. And that's thanks to the law of polarity. So it sucks, but scientifically it's necessary to create the fabric of space to create physical matter, to make all of this happen. The law of polarity is very required. Hopefully, though, and there's been mentioned, this isn't a hermetic thing, that there's other universes where polarity and the laws in general are different. So here's rooting for one of those. Number five is the law of gender. So everything is a gender. Everything is male or female. And that includes inside of us. So inside of us, we have the left brain is male, the right brain is female. And we have to, like, look, it even crosses because your left side controls your right, your right side controls your left. So even it's even showing us as within, so without, that these things are important to work together. And their balance is our enlightenment. Once we are balanced, this is why, especially you see it with Jesus, this is why enlightened people are usually androgynous. You, androgyny is weirdly the goal. <laughs> So we want to be, but with at the same time, you, if you're born a male, you need to honor the divine masculine. And if you're born a female, you need to honor the divine feminine. It's just the way the laws of the universe works. I'm not trying to be triggering. It just is. You need to honor the chosen path. Everything otherwise is a plot of darkness further pushing us into atheism because if you understood the laws of the universe and that gender is number five it's extremely important for balance this is where our balance comes in the yin and the yang that's gender yin yang yang masculine yin feminine balance negative positive negative feminine positive masculine sun positive masculine moon negative feminine 
we're always in this dancing, balancing game. And the masculine ends up looking more powerful because it is the physical powerhouse. But the feminine is your etheric powerhouse. So feminine females, you are just as powerful, but it's going to be in the etheric realms. It's going to be with shamanic work and dealing in the astral planes and we are this is why we can be more manipulative because manipulate manipulating is in the etheric realm when you are using your energy to come on to someone else's energy that is a feminine quality so men can do this too men and women can do anything the other can do but one's going to be more natural for the other one is an inherent gift given to the other and then number six we have the law of rhythm and this is one that's probably kept you on a roller coaster your whole life and it's one of the ones where you're going to want to really use the laws the the top laws to help save you from this because and this is why a truly enlightened master stops having fun <laughs> because the more fun you have think amusement parks the more not fun you're going to have later what comes up must come down come crashing down so the well that doesn't have to crash that's the whole point but it usually does right that's why bipolarism is off the charts just because we're getting more magical and the more magic we have means the more happiness we can have the more joy we can cultivate this means that's the more sorrow the more oh my god the more falling to a pit of despair because they have to equalize each other so you want to the law of rhythm is something to always keep in mind and one thing this is just a tip i have discovered on my own is because i'm a person that can get very 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 excited in a good way is i'm a i'm a, I'm a sagittarius we're very optimistic happy people usually and um so when i feel that excitement building in my chest i take a deep breath and i like breathe the excitement back into myself suck it back in and then yes it stops my it almost kind of tampers down the happiness to a point but it's like saving it for later it's it's not so you're not going to burn out later it's it's going to stop you from burning out because those that run high will burn low you know so you want to keep it even you want to stop not stop the fun but breathe it back in and don't go to things that are just meant to jack you up like arcades as you would have seen or heard i have children so all their events are filled with things that are meant to jack them up and bring and then they'll fall down you know so it's it's a balanced law for them but if you keep in mind the law of all is mind as within so without and vibrations and polarity you can help yourself through the law for them because in polarity the master can go from if you know and you can feel and, and these are energetic things so love hate they have their own frequency that you can find so if you're in hate you could switch to love and I, I i have done this so very possible dislike is like you just have to find the polarity like gross what's the polarity of gross i don't know you have to find it right like some kind of beauty right what's the of mess cleanliness right so you want to find the opposite and that's actually what you can easier jump to so love doesn't switch to gross and dislike doesn't switch to purple but like they all have their own polarity so that's something you just want to always think about that can help you switch from a good to a bad mood so that's your law of rhythm you really want to be careful and then cause and effect is karma we know karma 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 it's a, it's a, not a small deal but it's the one that we're preached with the most and you know what law is not on this list that you hear about all the time the law of attraction it's not on the list it's one of the new made-up ones in the 12 laws they made of the universe which like the law of action and all that stuff which are great things to know but the world is made of seven 12 is, is helpful and 12 has its own different meaning but the world is seven layers of heaven seven hermetic principles heaven seven is like very 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 important to always know so the law of attraction is not really real. What the law of attraction is, it's real. But the law of attraction is a mixture of your law of mind, as within, so without, and vibrations. You are taking these three together, and then if done properly, 
that's your law of attraction. With the law of attraction on its own, this is why people are like, oh, I'm doing all the things this like video is said to do and it's not working. Because it's way more complicated than that. Everything in the universe is way more complicated than just sitting down doing some matrin, mantras and hemming and hawing and now I'm fixed. No, it takes a lot of deep, 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 deep work. You have to open your mind. And the funny thing is, is like everybody has something to overcome. If you were abused, you have to overcome your abuse, but, but your abuse created depth. That created depth and now you could be a bigger person. So if you were a child that was not abused, good for you, but you still have to cultivate depth. So you kind of have to go abuse yourself now. You have to go, I don't know, climb a mountain. This is why like rich fancy people go on these pilgrimages to climb mountains. Well, those that were abused don't have to do that. They don't, you actually don't have to. You can if you want, that's a wonderful experience. I love rock climbing, but you don't. And in fact, it could help you overcome your trauma. But you have the depth inside you, that trauma and that abuse is how you can make your world bigger. And I kind of just took a sidestep there. That's nothing to do with the law of attraction. But, well, you, no, no, there we go. You will attract more things the bigger you are. That's why I started saying that. You need to be bigger, energetically bigger, much, much, much bigger. And to get bigger for your law of attraction, which is going to pull in your magnetism because you want to get to be magnetic, you need to get bigger and to get bigger you need to already have trauma and heal it or put yourself through some serious trials like think of the olden day trials people would go through you can have those trials already inside of yourself even if you weren't out and out abused just school is very abusing think of all the that's very scarring so there's lots of some stem scars there's lots of sun scars there's lots of scars trauma inside of us that need healing so start healing them and you will create a bigger magnetism for your law of attractionness but that one is not as easy as they predict it so i always focus on the all is mind because it's all encompassing and if you remember that every little thing you do and every little thing you see is a representation of your own internal mind then you're good you're gold you're set because that's it the all is mind so let's get deeply into the lesson here to start this off as clear as possible, yes, you are the generator for your entire reality. Though you have been tricked into giving away your power. In today's lesson, I want to try to convey to you the severity of the fact that the all is mind. This concept is so simple that our egos won't trust it. It will tell you life is more complicated, but it is not. It's not. This is why I live by the all is mind. And thinking through the heart, which we did last one, because if you all mind and then think through your heart, you can't go wrong because the heart will never go wrong. The, the actual brain can. The actual brain is very negative. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And then your guts are another brain, which is the next lesson. But the guts don't really have any thought patterns, but I'll get to that later. You want to think from the heart because you can't. the heart will never steer you wrong. It's, it's only made for good. The complication comes from the ego itself. So that's when you're trying to use your brain. And the programs that have been keeping us tied down. Their ties were severed in 2012. That's no joke. We were actually like, things were actually standing in our way and not letting us access our true power. So we were actually enslaved. But then in 2012, that was over for a multitude of different assumed reasons. It was the end of the era though. And we moved into the age of Aquarius. So it could just be an age-based thing right or these things usually have like the the huge metaphysical metaphoric stories and the archetypical stories they kind of coincide with the universe because the universe is a beautiful symphony of music that actually all ties in together at the same time it's very well orchestrated because the all is mine so it's going to make a beautiful perfect story because it's just one being it's not a lot of beings we are one being so Seven in 2012, but we weren't notified. <laughs> uh, we were told, oh, it's going to end. Even I knew back then, and I was an atheist. I was like, nah, the Mayans, dudes. Like, I'd already been to Mexico at that point. I was like, dudes, the Mayans. I had those Mayan calendars. They said it's the end of an era. Since when is the end of an era the end of life? And there'd been many end of eras. So I thought that was just ridiculous, even way back then. <laughs> we are free to walk away from our programming at any point now. It's where is my programming and how I walk away that becomes the issue for today's lesson. We will focus on empowering your mind with knowledge of its waiting sovereignty because now, like, what is it, 11 years later, we 
are free, but we don't know it. And a lot, a lot of people don't know it. And they live in the, oh, what, the government said so? Oh, better do it. They said I got to. Why? Why? Ask yourself. I think it's like every day they insert 23 new laws in America. I don't live in America, but like I'm sure it's much worse here because Canada's Sorry, we started. Not cool. The all is mind. This means we live in the mind of God, universal mind. The universe is mind. Like if the idea of God scares you, because I know some people come from traumatized religious past. It's better than being an atheist, I would say, but <laughs> that's the new religion kids are getting raised up into, and I was. So if you were raised as a Christian or a Muslim or, I don't know, a Hindu, I don't, I don't know why you complain about that, because that one seems great. But <laughs> instead of crying about being raised with a bad religion, just be glad you had a religion and that you had God. Because no child should cry themselves to sleep that there's no God. And this is a growing thing that is happening more and more every day. Like. I know children that don't know that there's a heaven or a hell. They don't know what God is. They're, they don't know. They, they, they're too young to understand, like, there's nothing. Like, I remember, okay, so when I die, I'm nothing. That, no child should go through that. That should be classed as child abuse. Not that I'm for laws, but just in case you're watching this, that's child abuse. Since we have a universal mind and we are conscious beings, we are a part of the creator mind that is the God mind. Our thoughts make reality itself, especially our own. So that we talked earlier that your mind will influence other people, depending on how magnetic you are. It might seriously affect other people. And always keep in mind your magnetism can be positive or evil. So you want to make sure you are good <laughs> for yourself and for others, because that'll cause you karma, even if you're not meaning to do it. If you're that negative, that your negativity is influencing other people, you're now racking up karma and you don't even know it. Everything is based on mind, is led by mind, is fashioned by mind. If you speak and act with a polluted mind, suffering will follow you as the wheels of the ox cart. Follow the footsteps of the ox. Everything is based on mind, is led by mind, is fashioned by mind. If you speak and act with a pure mind, happiness will follow you as a shadow clings to a form. And that is spoken by none other than Gutma Buddha. The Buddha, super fan. And then we have Neville Goodard, also a super fan of him. He's one of our beautiful pioneers in our new awakening movement. Man's chief delusion is his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. That is just one brief thing from Neville Goodard because honestly, I could have taken anything from any one of his books I've read. Ooh, over five. Um, and then you, they kind of just, no, because right, his message is so clear and it's like pretty similar to my own, the, though he doesn't say it in these words. I don't even know if you read the Hermetics. He actually manages to say everything through the Bible, which I always think is is a nice, I'm a fan of Jesus for sure, but but from a, but from a, like a metaphysical standpoint. So he clearly was as well. And uh, just get your hands on a few of his books there. They will help align you with your mind being your major reality and the main thing you need to cultivate and work on. And then everyone knows Eckhart Tolle, he was on Oprah. <laughs> People don't realize that now is all there ever is. There is no past or future except as memory or anticipation in your mind. Now I love Eckhart Tolle, he is the one that's, that was the final straw and me being like, okay, there's a God. And I literally was waiting for him to say it because he doesn't actually overly say it in the book. Um, he, his book is, um, I was already waking up to, it's funny because I was already understanding that energy was real. And I knew, it's funny, I got into metaphysics before finally being like, okay, there is a God. Like there is a God, I guess. Because you couldn't believe all this stuff and still not believe in a God or life after death. It, it's, it's in layers to fully let that sink in your being when you were such a deep atheist. This is a very real problem that's happening to the earth that we need to save it from. Can you imagine? This is to go the other way and everyone ends up an atheist. The universe itself might just stop existing because we're all in the mind of God. And if the actual mind of God no longer believes in God, God might actually stop existing. Think about that. Scary. The principle of mentalism, or better, or better understood, the all is mind, states that everything in the universe is ultimately made up of the mind or consciousness. This means that the reality 
we perceive, such as the material world, life, phenomena, matter, and energy are all manifestations of the underlying mind or consciousness. It suggests that the universe itself is a product of this universal mind. So that's just, you know, reiterating what we're already talking about here. Remember, when we say mind in esotericism, we don't mean the brain. We mean the mind. We mentioned this last week while discussing the heart. The mind is the entire energy body and more. The mind is your entire being. So yes, you want to work on focusing your thoughts on good, but the entire energy body will need alignment to head towards per perfection of self. So alignment is the, you know, the middle pillar. Have a law. I'm very big on that. You want that middle pillar life. You want to, one's Lucifer, one's Satan. I don't know if I have my sides right. Lucifer and Satan are two different beings. Shock. But Christ consciousness is the middle. And you want that to be aligned because when that is aligned, that is your equilibrium. The others are the imbalancing, right? This is your equilibrium. And think Lucifer's fun. When we were talking about the law of rhythm, Lucifer's fun. Satan is no fun. So too much fun goes to too much not fun. So this is why we want to balance them, right? But then Satan has the materialism and it actually is your stability side. So so Satan has its points too, I guess. But uh, he's worth stability. And then Lucifer is fun, like all your actual living life. I'm more of a fan of Lucifer, but really, I'm not, I mean, I'm a fan, you know what I mean? I'm a fan of Christ, Christ consciousness. You want to be the middle pillar the middle pillar. So this is important. This is vital, but a full lesson for another day. If your energy body is not in alignment, old traumas and blockages will stand in the way of a centered alignment of mind. So this is the, this is the middle pillar. If you're not aligned, blockages will get in your way. So if you have traumas, which most people do, almost everybody does they will literally stand in your way like this is where you, i'll use the term demons a lot uh negative entities because they create like life like your traumas have created you have birthed more lives than you even realize out of yourself you could birth happy lives too but you probably birth more negative lives anytime you have an extreme emotional reaction think anytime you're like i just can't handle this you know you you just made a life so they're going to follow you around, but getting in your central center middle pillar will help them dissipate and, and come back inside you because they could be your own soul pieces or you send them to the light. You just, it'll get rid of them. We all have fractured minds. We want to focus our energy on as much coherence as possible. We have lifetime after lifetime of chaos and doom imprinted in our DNA, not to mention the trauma accumulated in this life. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. That is scientifically proven in normal science, too, that you have DNA trauma because you do. It's very, very sad that even if you weren't abused, but your parents were, you're going to feel that, too, especially unless they heal. This is why you want to heal your trauma before you produce a child. Because if you heal properly before you produce a child, you have, will have repaired or completely healed your DNA of that. And then the child will be more improved. I, I have three children and I can verify this in the proof of my third child. I can just tell like there's things in the first child. I obviously I love my children, but there's things that it's like, because why are you like, why are you acting like this? Like there's just things that just don't align with the life we have now. But I wasn't as healed i was on the healing path um having children will make you speed up healing but i wasn't all the way there and then the next one i was a little more there and then by the third one i was almost i mean i'm still healing but i'm i'm way i'm i'm pretty much healed compared to how i used to be and now it's almost like a new on the tree of kabbalah once you get to the very top it flips back over and you start all over again so i've gone to the top of that tree and probably a few more but it keeps flipping so you're always coming right back to the bottom <laughs> but of a new realm of existence. So it's still better. But you start to feel bad again. And then you get to the top and you feel enlightened. Woo! And then boom, you're back to feeling bad. Sometimes you might think this is a law of rhythm, but actually you've just flipped over and now you're at a new tree of life and you're just starting at the bottom again. So it actually could be a good thing. Again, another full lesson would need to be to comprehend that, but it's very powerful. The principle of mentalism or the all is mind emphasizes that the mind is the foundation of all existence. 
It holds that the thoughts, beliefs, and intentions we hold in our minds play a significant role in shaping our reality. It suggests that by understanding and harnessing the power of our minds, we can influence and create the experiences we desire in life. And then here we just have that famous painting showing like that even back then, they, I think that's Picasso, was telling us that that's a, that's a brain. And that's God in the brain reaching to Adam. And he does say that that's God and that's Adam, I think. That's a brain reaching, hello, to man. So he's trying to, hello, God in a brain. We are a brain. Remember always that you cannot be anywhere except in the mind of God. When you forget this, you will despair and you will attack. The ego depends solely on your willingness to tolerate it. That's from A Course in Miracles, another book you must read. I don't know if it's available free anywhere, but it's not that much. Oh, it is on their website. If you go to, there's like a society for them now. I haven't actually verified this, but they've said it. And so I believe them. <laughs> if you go to their website, um, I'm sure you're not just hearing about this book from me if you're into spirituality. It's not easy to read. It's a chunk. It's wordy. Um, very, 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 very wordy, but worth it. Very worth it. And if I were you, I would, this is a bit of a hack, start reading it. Just get like yourself a good chunk in, maybe at least 100 pages or more, and then switch to the lessons. Don't switch. Simultaneously switch to the lessons. And then you want to do a lesson. There's a lesson every single day for a year. And it's little things. It, basically what it's doing is it's slowly but surely rewiring your brain to overcome the dominance of the ego. Because the ego, you, I mean, if you're not awake, that's what awakening means. It means awakening to the fact that, that this ego is a separate entity. It's not, it's not like, it's, it's not from God. It's from us. It's like God made us and then we made the ego. And there's lots of theories of what and why that is. The, the Course in Miracles goes into detail of, of what that is. Like we accidentally were God and we were like exploring and then we accidentally went too far and was like, I wonder what it would be like to not remember I'm God. And then we went, boop. And then we forgot we were God. And here we are still today, millions of years later. And the ego is what we created to be our God, something like that. And uh, it's the ego's not your friend. If everyone is familiar with the matrix and the theories around our world being one, know that it is true. We live in a matrix. Once upon a time, this was used against us but we are the ones creating it. To change our programming, to change this matrix of a world, we have to change our minds. The power of this is already ours. We just have to wake up to it. Now, I'm not trying to scare you with the matrix stuff because there's so many things out there trying to bring us down a doom path. Remember there's tons of timelines and you switch timelines with every thought you make, so keep them high to go high. Two, yes, we live in a matrix. Matrix means mother in Latin, madre, mudra, mud, mudra in latin it comes from that word which is the mother so yes we are a holographic world printed by god but that's all existence is that's what an existence is because we are a mind so i feel like these people going oh no the matrix don't understand that the all is mind how would a mind create something think about your own thoughts what are you doing what are you doing in your thoughts did you make a real physical world no you made a projection a holographic projection inside your mind that you're like walking around in that's that's the matrix, right? So don't worry about it. Although there was alien tinkering in the past. It's one of the things that went away in 2012. Like they did have a false matrix over us that might still be there, but it's been damaged and we can get out of it. So that's all theories though. In essence, the principle of the all is mind encourages us to recognize the fundamental nature of the mind in shaping our reality and to use this understanding to consciously create the life we want. So this is just, you know, beautiful showing like this is our mind and how powerful it is. It's extremely powerful. Only one answer here. We must get control of our minds and for those that can't see the imagery, there's a very, very, very upset screaming man climbing up a mountain and tangly webs of brain, which I just feel like are so accurate because we, the ego is this tangled web that's in and all around us. And even as you begin to heal and remove yourself from it, it is just still choking you and 
ugh, and it, you have to escape and you can escape. They even have that tangly vine weed, not just in Harry Potter, but it's, it's been used in other like mystical stories before. And that tangly strangling vine weed is what our ego is and like our negative entities are. And there's a parasitic programming inside of us. And um, ooh, what's the other one? Implants inside of us all verifiable to as much as metaphysics can be verified. But there is a lot of people that are, devote their lives to studying this stuff, and I believe them. The law of vibration reveals that our thoughts and beliefs emit specific vibrations that resonate with the energy frequencies of the universe. These vibrational patterns shape our perception of reality and influence the outcomes we experience in life. In a sense, our thought patterns act as imprints that mold the very fabric of our existence. So this is, you know, just more reiteration of the all is mind and that and that the vibrations that we create with our mind are what make our physical reality. This is true. Our mind, there's research being done that's trying to explain the metaphysical knowledge that our eyes are not actually what's seeing anything. They are receiving light, like the the photons. And then there's something inside the retina that basically paints like an artist what we are seeing. And then also the physical reality is being generated by our mind power and the minds around us. So watch yourself next time you say your house sucks because you might make it start crumbling. Think about an abandoned, not an abandoned house. That's a scientifically proven thing too, normal science. That when a house is abandoned for no reason whatsoever, just for the lack of attention, we're not like I don't walk around my house repairing stuff 24 seven. The house stands on its own. All I do is live here. But if you if I was to abandon this house within months, it would start crumbling because it needs the attention to hold its very fabric together. And we're talking old, solid houses. It doesn't it it doesn't matter the quality of the house. If it's ignored, it will crumble. Within months, it will start to crumble. Within a couple of years, it'll be eaten up. Not just, and it'll start to crumble before vegetation even eats it, because you can make an argument, oh, the vegetation did it. It'll start to crumble before that. So that's something you should look into that. It, that was, that right there is huge proof to attention is so important. And there's the rice study. That's been repeated many, many times where the happy, there was the three things of rice, the one rice was told, I love you every day. It did great. The one rice was told, I hate you every day. It sucks. But then the one rice that was ignored every day was the putrid disgust. It was worse than the, the one that was told, I hate you. So if you ignore something, a child, this is why children will look for negative attention because negative attention is better than no attention. So give your children and all children lots of attention. They love it. Even when I go pick my kids up from school, there's other kids like, oh, hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> They are thirsty. Imagine our thoughts as ripples in a pond, creating a ripple effect that extends beyond our conscious awareness. These vibrational ripples, ripples interact with the energetic matrix of the universe, attracting or repelling corresponding circumstances and events. In this way, our thoughts essentially create the matrix we live in. Uh, essentially, definitely. <laughs> definitely create the, the world we live in and then this is just a, a, a blurry image that you can't see if you're even on the podcast just showing that our brains are literally divided into yin and yang they run off that yin yang the whole system within us runs off that masculine feminine principle which is important to know to properly be able to print out your all is mindness because you want to print out a balanced all is mindness and yin and yang male and female is the balance by understanding the law of vibration, we gain insight into the power of our thoughts and the impact that they have on our lives. We can consciously choose to cultivate positive and empowering thought patterns, aligning our vibrations with our desired outcomes. With this awareness, we can actively shape our reality and manifest a life that is in harmony with our intentions. The law of vibration offers a key to unlocking our full potential and creating a fulfilling and purposeful existence. Quantum physics has proven this concept. When we perceive the molecular level, 
we find atoms linked together. The atoms are made out of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And even deeper, we find the realm of subatomic particles. This is a strange world where everything that we knew before does not make sense. The subatomic particles have a particular property. They can be in two states at one time, both particle and both wave. This is called wave particle duality. After the double slit exper experiment, the scientists observed that when a particle in wave form is observed, it collapses into a particle. So by, simple perceive, by simply perceiving it, it changes from energy to particle. So matter is created just by observing it. This has been scientifically proven. Same with our universe by observing and reacting to your reality, you create it again and again. And the same with the universe, it exists because it's being observed by the all eternally. So it's the, do the double slit experiment, I have a video of it here that I use in the workshop. I don't know if you can hear it, it's very loud. You'd expect the key two strips to correspond with the two slits. But I'm not gonna just leave that there in case you can't hear it. And then those on the podcast can't see it. So I will just explain the double slit uh, experiment to you. Scientists had their fancy particle shooting machine and depending if you were looking or not, depended if it was a particle or a wave. And us looking is what collapses the wave. It's what makes reality reality. And they have scientifically proven that again and again, they've, they've been able to duplicate it. He who stumbles a little less, we call good. And he who stumbles a little more, we call bad. It is not that there are two different people or presences, but the same presence, God, manifesting in different degrees. That's by Swami Vivekananda. That's a fun one. And that's very important. It's saying, so nothing is technically evil and good to the ultimate mind of God. Because God is the all. So once you actually know that God is the all, that means God's the evil part too. It just is. That's where things like demiurges and and demigods and Jesus himself and the Holy Spirit all come into play as important because they are ones that we can look at for good. Now Christ, con okay, so if you don't, A Course in Miracles written by Jesus, by the way. It's a channeled book, but it's very good. I'm a fan of the New Testament. I'm a fan of Jesus. Jesus is the one that pulled me out of atheism, not because any Christian came to me, because Jesus himself did, and I know it's weird, but I've already told that story, so if you care, it's in my origin story. But um, they are powers for good, powers for positive. So if you were looking for positive help, you have to seek out positive beings, and everybody has their own gods and stuff they like to work with. Um, you want to find a positive one because God himself or the all, now I'm not saying God's evil. God is ultimately good. God is good at the very, very, very top layer. God is good. But that's why nothing bad is bad, really. Everything bad is also good because God's good. And, and, and bad and evil was just how physical reality could be made because of the law of polarity. And if you didn't have evil... You couldn't have physical reality. I can't pretend to understand the science behind it, but that is what they say. The reason why the law of polarity is is so they could create physical reality. It had to be done, right? Because, I don't know, they got bored of flying around and they wanted to be physical. This means those who are connected more to God will automatically manifest more good so this is connected to that christ consciousness center though especially if we're saying the word god that's usually it depends on where you're from and what your connotation is with it but i think god is good think about it god is missing an o it is the word good that's where they say the word god came from is the word good and then think of the early bible stories it was good it was good it was good they're trying to really tell you i'm sorry i made a lot of bad stuff but i'm good <laughs> So if you focus in on that, it's going to help your mind generate a good reality. The all is mind, though. God contains both good and evil. Humans are made to be good, but intelligent. The knowledge of good and evil. Now, this is huge. Simply knowing evil is what has caused us to manifest it for so many centuries. We are babies, and the training wheels were taken off before we were ready, or it had to be done before we were ready. 
as a learning situation. So yes, we know about evil, but inherently we are not. We are good. And so is source at its ultimate core. It's why there is so much mention of it being good in the creation stories. So this is, oh, I love this. The Adam and Eve story, the knowledge of good and evil, like, hello, think about it. We're animals. We're animals. And all of a sudden, look at what your dog does. They're gross. Look what animals do. Look what a tiger, look what a lion does. Are they evil? No, because they don't know it. They don't know eating somebody's wrong. They don't know snakes going and steal a baby. Like they, they're egg stealers, right? Snakes going and stealing eggs and eating them. Do they? Are they evil? No, because they don't know what made us evil. Like the whole Adam and Eve woke up in the garden of Eden and, oh no, they knew they were naked and they were ashamed because they woke up to the fact that they were heathens and i'm not i'm not like saying that in a hateful way but think about humans like they were just sitting around all, ooh, 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 ooh. you know that's my this is me being like stumping someone on the head like if you wanted something if somebody if you had a woman and and somebody else wanted it they just go take it and think about poor women they would have been taken all the time but they weren't evil yet all of a sudden one of them grew a conscience and this is where alien tinkering comes in right like did the aliens diddle with us and make us wake up to the fact that we were that did we did we just evolve into it because obviously it's ultimately a part of evolution until we can get to that point of rising above our proclivity to evil is that that will be our transcending moment and that's what the goal is right but know that that the knowledge of good and evil is what hurts us because we were doing evil before it, like eve the apple apples are just toroidal fields and the apple is used as a symbol of wisdom because if you cut it in half that's not why it just is like if you cut it in half it, it speaks out the ancient hebrew alphabet and the ancient hebrew hebrew alphabet alphabet including sanskrit as well are both vibrationally very magic um so look into that it's very powerful then the apple itself is said to print out um the ancient hebrew letters um so the apple is just a symbol of knowledge and a symbol of magic but so eve eating the apple didn't do it it's just the fact that that's used as a story to symbolize magic being handed to us and it waking us up so knowledge was handed to us the apple was given to us and the serpent's always been used as a symbol of knowledge so that magic knowledge apple the magic knowledge serpent was handed to us and we were like oh my god i've been like eating and raping people oh my god like what the i i married my brother like what oh my god that's evil you know what i mean or like we're not even getting married you know what i mean like we woke up to being evil and then like the shame and the guilt has haunted us ever since because we we're probably doing really messed up stuff and then there still remains people that are asleep like they say like not everybody like there's still people that walk around going oh and they don't even know they're evil but they are but they have to wake up to it and this is why children are not responsible for what they do every adult is by the way whether they're awake or not you're responsible for your own evil just because you choose to stay awake because it is just that it is a choice for you to stay asleep but if you're a child um you're not responsible you're not responsible i think to your 21 given the seven year cycles um and then or well <laughs> it's 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 seven you become more responsible 14 you become more even more responsible and then 21 you are completely responsible so there is incremental levels there as well and then also if you're special i hope if you're special needs i would assume you're not responsible but i actually can't verify that i know children original sin is simply the knowledge of sin clogging up our minds our minds that are the all the all is mind think good thoughts do good deeds and you will have a good life want a prosperous life and think prosperous thoughts and hold to them as a reality not as a fanciful wish this is why neville goddard will really go into feel it feel that you just won the lottery feel that you just bought that house feel that you just got that job you know this goes for anything you want in life feel that you already have it love money respect it's already yours and just have you just have to live from that place vibrationally because you will literally create those vibrations that will ripple out into your entire being this will eventually alter your frequency to match which is the blueprint the mind of the all uses to make your life it's an automatic creation you are an algorithm this is fact 
you are an algorithm, but you alter that algorithm depending on your energy body, like your energy body, your frequency is your algorithm, but that you can upgrade, upgrade your algorithm. Use that information to become a master coder of your own life. Saturate your life and your thoughts with your true soul desires and your destiny will open up for you, your dharma. Your life is yours to write. This is where we go from karma to dharma is when you switch into living from a soul led place and you're on your, your hopefully your final human incarnation and you can reach your dharma's potential, which not necessarily going to look like riches, right? Dharma is not like, material wealth is nothing to do with spirituality it's just part of making the human experience comfortable and usually it's a lot easier to not be evil when you're comfortable like just this morning it's freezing in this house freezing out in canada it's freezing and it just oh, it makes me mad like i was just like why am i so cold like it's not air like it's not and I, i'm like i'm whining here but just like it's just to show that like one minute you could be so zen and then the next minute you're to you're cold and you're like, ooh, you know, it's really hard to stay positive when you're in a negative circumstance. So this is why seeking things like material wealth and life, the world is abundant. In. Everybody can be rich. That whole thing of money, evil, not true. Evil people touch money, but money is its own energy source and it's not good or evil. It's how you use it. So if you want money, get it. It'll make you happier and it'll make it easier to ascend because you don't need to fuss about lame stuff anymore but if you're one of those awesome people that can go live in a cabin in the woods with nothing good for you too because that's that be easier because you don't need to worry about the money you just go right to the enlightenment our reactions to things are our biggest obstacle to overcome how we go through good times and bad is what makes our life so just like me this morning being too cold the law of rhythm the sixth law dictates that what goes up must come down however by using the first principle of the all is mind we can master this and think of ourselves as puddle jumpers this does not mean toxic positivity because i've been there but it does mean finding the positive spin now you don't want to get toxically positive all this thing about me saying this whole lesson you have to be positive you have to be positive you have to actually be positive i feel like we all go through when we're awakening we all go through that um temporary uh insanity of don't be mad everything's perfect yeah that's just gonna make you explode and go nuts because if it's sad be sad you just gotta learn not to wallow if you're mad be mad but don't have freak out rages like you have to authentically feel your emotions but emotions are not part of us they are this separate existence like the earth is in layers and the energy uh layer or sorry the emotional body i think is the one above us i'd have to check uh, but we go into stages of etheric realms around us, right? Um, actually, no, emotions wouldn't be next. The astral body's next, and then I think it's emotions. And so emotions, but they're real. They come and go in and out of us. And I'm sure you've experienced the moment where you're sitting there feeling just fine, and all of a sudden you're sad. And then your mind, because it loves to put on movies. Eckhart Tolle talks about that, and it's like mind movies. I forget. It's been a while since I read the books, but he like your mind will print a movie screen for you of this emotion you're feeling but that has nothing to do with it but you can still thank you can still thank and be like oh because it helped surface trauma that still needs healing so you don't need to shoot away you could still acknowledge it and give it honors and thank it and and wish it well and it's healing like it's a separate thing and and that'll help you heal it because emotions come and go and you don't want to hold on to them once you grab that emotion and go oh yes i'm so sad or I'm so mad. Now you've taken it in and made it a part of you. And you will, every time you remember something, you're not remembering it from the original time. You're remembering the last time you remembered it, unless it's the second, like the first time you're pulling it up in your memory. That's the only time you're authentically remembering something. Every other time you were remembering the last time you remembered it. So think about every time, especially trauma things that you pull up in your mind all the time. Every time you're just remembering the last time you remembered it. So if you save file with that emotion that just came through your system, you just save that in your files. It, You know what I mean? Like think about literally pulling up a Word document and editing it and then pulling up it again and editing it. You're doing that every single time you pull up a memory. So always, you know, be careful with that one because that one was like, whoa, to me when I found that out because I used to be a big wallower of like, oh, poor me, my life used to suck. Because you're going to make your future life suck as well. Very important. Uh, oh, this was just for the uh, workshop that we did. We did questions and answers. So if you actually care about having questions and answers, you can come to my next workshop, which is coming up on 
Monday, and I always have my workshops listed on my website, which is www.spiritmom.com. Oh, no, sorry, spiritmomcoaching.com. I'm a life coach, a shamanic life coach, and I help people heal from their traumas. I know what it's like. It sucks, but I'm here to help if you need it and you want to come to a live workshop, but no pressure because the podcast is free. Uh, but the workshops are $11.11. Eleven dollars and eleven cents. Yes, I was only gonna make them ten dollars, but then I was like, mm, but eleven eleven is more fun. <laughs> you don't need to charge that much for workshops because all the people that come there's usually about fifteen people, but it's just on Zoom, so it's cool. God is an infinite sphere, the center of which is everywhere. The circumstance nowhere. Hermes Trismegista. He's the one who laid down the teachings for the entire Hermetics, Hermes. It's, it's him. And Hermes is Thoth, allegedly. Some people even say Jesus. Jesus was Thoth, Hermes. And then there's uh, Matthias de Stefano said he personally knew him when, if you don't know Matthias de Stefano, go learn Matthias de Stefano right now. Like, seriously. Um, he's the top teacher. Uh, he's just hard to understand too. I mean, I understand. I mean, I, I mean, I do, I like pay attention, but he's very, very smart. And his main language is Spanish. I feel like I literally was already trying to learn Spanish and I feel like that was for him before I even knew him. So it's funny. Um, but I'm not good at languages, which is neither here nor there, but it's why I feel passionate about bringing as much information out as possible because not everybody is your vibratory cup of tea when it comes to understanding what they're saying. You can understand that somebody's saying something very profound, but they don't have your same story. They don't have, they're not your same astrological match. You know, I'm a Sagittarius, so that won't jive with the Capricorn. Capricorns hate me, right? You're going to watch me and go, oh, you're like a total spaz. I'm not watching you, you know, because they're all, oh, you know, and I usually don't, like Capricorn, so sorry if you're one of them. But we all have our vibratory matches, right? And some people will cast a wider net and they speak to everybody, like Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, because if you read his book, it's very, a very wide net he managed to cast with that book, where it can speak to anybody who's from any background. And and that that'll work for you. But some people might not like Neville Goodard because he mentions the Bible all the time in his books and that might upset people. I have no here nor there. I'm not a fan of the Old Testament. I think it's, I, uh, I think they should take a lot of stuff out of it. I think we need to take the Bible and redo it. I get the stories because they're, you know, like the whole Genesis stories and everything are, it's like people are like, the Bible's not real. Yeah, except those mythological stories are from the age of the dawn of time. Like ancient Egypt. Oh, yeah, Yahut. That's what I started saying when I started saying Matthias de Stefano. Yahut was his original name. And Matthias de Stefano knew him in Atlantis when he was a female priestess there. He can remember all his past lives. That's his thing. And uh, that's why he knows everything. And he really does. Everything he knows um, lines up with the laws of Hermetics. And he knows things that no one else has ever said before. But they, like, if you hear them, they match. If you know a lot of spiritual information, which I do, it totally connects the dots because there's all these different religions, which is funny enough. That's what I seek to do. This is what I want to do. Like I'm not here to teach the laws of hermetics. I use them for the groundwork because this is the beginning of this podcast. But eventually, like I, I want to bridge all into metaphysics, period, because metaphysics is just a scientific term for metaphysics you know what i mean everything magical in the world ties together in a scientific explanation but like oh my god science is saying that there's no such thing as magic it's hilarious because once upon a time the science you're doing people would get killed and burned at the stake for being a witch so this is the irony that you are okay like they're like the biggest problem with the world right now is them not a fan <laughs> but that wraps up our lesson today of the all is mind and our second episode of transcending ascension so i will end this here if you have any questions you can comment um on youtube if you're watching this in a podcast i'm not sure how podcasting comments work i know you can i think you can comment on apple podcast but you can always head over to youtube or my website if you want to reach out, it is, like I said, spiritmomcoaching.com. 
and it will be in the description box below. Like and comment and follow if you wish. More great things to come. And I promise you it will be good. My original education is in journalism. So this is literally what I originally was always going to do. But the normal world of journalism just wasn't doing it for me because uh, the media is corrupt and evil. And I learned that a long time ago when I went to school. And then I was just left in nothing because I didn't want to report on anything like that until I found metaphysics. And now I finally have something to set my teeth into. I've been studying it now for over 10 years or about 10 years, almost over 10 years, 11 years. Ooh, 11. And I am 11, by the way. If you're into numerology, it's very important. Uh, so 11s matter. So 11 years, here we are. And I am bringing you all the amalgamation of my information shall come to you today in transcending ascension. So I will talk to you all in our next episode. Goodbye for now. Spirit Mom.